Hi everyone, it's Felicity here today with a project life process video for the Hip Kit Club using the February 2017 Project Life Kit. Now I just love all the exclusive Project Life cards and all the embellishments that come with this kit. My Project Lifestyle is perhaps a little bit, could you say different? <laughs> Maybe a bit more unique to, than to the traditional Project Life that perhaps you've seen um, from the likes of Becky Higgins. I've adapted or changed my project life to suit what I want to do. There is no right or wrong way to do a project life spread. There's no right or wrong way on how you document those moments, how you document your photos, how you document what the kids say and do, their milestones. You do what works best for you. For my project life, I actually have an album each for my children. I've got two boys and a girl, and each child has an album. Now, in that album, I keep my project life spreads and their scrapbooking pages. So what I do is I pretty much document their project life more on a month basis. I, I guess, print out all the photos, grab out my memory planner from the month and use that to jog my memory and to document what they've done for that month. So this spread here that I am doing is for my eldest son for the month of, let me have a look, January. So this is the start of 2017 for him and it's actually I think the third page by memory in his album of Project Lifestyle. So I don't have a set amount of pages that I do on Project Life for my children. All I do is document what I need to document for them. The reason I guess too behind the way that I do this which I've actually done it this way now, I think I'm in my third year, because the children, I guess having three, three children at three different ages, they seem to be at different stages in their life. So I just found that documenting my life as such week by week, the traditional way, just doesn't seem to work the, as best for me, I guess. I guess having the this pages or the albums done this way as an each individual child in each album. It's because I guess my eldest son here, he's at school most of the time. He has different moments, memories, milestones from school that I want to document. And I probably don't have as many as them as compared to, I guess, my daughter who is at home with me all the time. I can take photos 24-7 of her. I can, um, I guess, write more about what she's done because I'm with her all the time. Compared to that of my children that are at school, I'm relying on them to then give me the information at the end of the day, what they've done, what they've achieved. And my boys don't like to disclose a lot of information about their day. They're the type of boys that will tell me two weeks later, oh, mum, I got student of the class, or oh, mum, I got thumbs up this week. Yes, that's my boys. Or I find a note in the bottom of their bag, and I was like, hey, Bray, were you supposed to give me this? Yeah, you get the idea. <laughs> so I guess that's why I've chosen to, to do the children's albums this way in my project life. I probably end up doing more spreads, or pages um, this way too where compared to that if I was to go week by week simply because you know Bray for example here he's already got three three pages for January my middle child Piper he I think I'm up to two spreads for him already so that's a total of five compared to that if you were to do week by week so I don't I'm not worried I just love documenting project life. 
So you can see here with my son at the start of his school year, he's had an exceptional start to his education. I just can't be more thankful for his teacher, his friends, the school, for what he's already achieved. You can see here he got the first, excuse that aeroplane flying over the house, we've got ag planes today spraying our crops, so I apologise for the random planes, but today is just the right time for me to do a voiceover for this Project Life Spread, so I apologise immensely for that zoom sound. <laughs> Anywho, sidetracked. Yes, he's had an exceptional year. He got student of the week, the first one for his grade, the second week in when they started to award the student of the week. So I couldn't be more thankful that obviously he settled in really well and his teacher actually rewards them not only with a certificate but they also get to choose a gift from the rack. And his teacher happens to be very sporty so there is a lot of balls and shirts and uh, all, you know all those sporty things and he actually chose this tennis shirt that time which he was very very excited about so I wanted to make sure that I got a photo at school near his classroom with the certificate and with his shirt and then that same week he's been also doing swimming he happened to get swimmer of the week as well so that was a pretty exciting week for him. It was a lot of encouragement for him to simply keep giving his best. And that's all I ask for my children is to simply give their best and to have good behaviour and good manners. So I was very excited. I guess a little proud mummy moment, I suppose, <laughs> as well, and for him to receive these awards. So I wanted to actually make sure that I documented what he actually got here and how he received it. Even just documenting, I guess, um, what could you say? I guess the emotion that he had behind it as well because they're things that he's going to want to um, look back on and we too would like to look back on and discuss it with him as well. So a little trick as well, which you will see me do. I think it's on this spread. It might be another one. I, oh, I'm sorry. I've done a few and I can't remember. But if I don't actually have enough room for the story, I actually turn the photo or the card over and write the story on the back of the photo or the card because it's still documenting or still recording the journaling. It's just not always visible. And that's totally okay with me. Yes, you have to pull the photo or the card out of the sleeve, but that totally doesn't bother me at all. I guess it comes down to perfect personal preference. I could add in more photos, I guess, or double up, I suppose, even on photos to make a full page just so I can add journaling. As I said, there is no right or wrong way how you record your photos and what you do it's just this is what works best for me this is how I like to do it this is what I enjoy I guess in my project life um, so as you can see my project life spreads are often quite full of embellishing again that's my own personal like my own personal style and perhaps that's what makes it unique as well. So you can see as I've been yabbering away, <laughs> um, there are a few favourite things that I like to add into my project life and that is some labels. I like to add in lots of sentiment, sentiments, texts, thickers, alphas, because I like to, I guess, write, if I can, um, I guess, what describes that photo. So because I embellish a lot on my photos, I actually try to keep my photos quite large, as in a 3x4 photo or a 4x6. I guess I'm at an advantage as well because I do print all my photos from home. 
So often when it comes time to go through my photos on the PC, I always have my personal life page there beside me so that I can make sure that I'm going to get the right size photo. Then it's just a matter of me sticking everything down, writing my journaling, adding in stitching, which I actually do add a little bit of hand stitching into my, my spread here as well. I do try and balance out my pages simply by adding in, I guess you can see, let's just use an example, it might be easier to explain. You can see here with my spread with Bray up in the right corner, you've got a picture of him holding his shirt that he won and his school shirt. And over to the left in a three by four photo, you can see him in that tennis shirt that he won at school. So that's already directing the eye across to that section of the page. Then on the bottom left, which I've actually cut off, I apologize again, rookie error. <laughs> He's got a picture of him in his school shirt, which then again, matches in with the photo at the right. So you've already started to get a bit of a visual triangle as such for the eye to follow your way around my project life page because it does get very busy. But this is bringing it nearly to an end here. I'll explain more on my project life process in other videos. So be sure to make sure that you subscribe to my channel because I do have at least another two in the next couple of weeks project life pages where I can talk a little bit more of my process of making my project life spreads. I do finish this off camera because you can see that card in the middle that says today was. I do finish it off with some hand stitching to add in a little bit more interest and dimension to the spread. But if you do have any questions at all, please just let me know on Whatever it is, don't be shy. Let me know and I'm more than happy to help you the best that I can anyway. But this kit from the Hip Kit February 2017 Project Life Kit can be found in the shop. So be sure to pop over and have a look. And there's my finished page. So I do thank you for watching again today. I will leave the link to my blog and to the Hip Kit in the comment section and as I said please if there's anything I can help you with just let me know thank you so much for watching today